Lab Report 9741. Date, August 16th, 2018. We've come across an interesting entity in the past month or so. As part of our containing and monitoring of said entity, we've hired him as part of our lab team. Yes, entity is the correct term, as we don't quite know what this humanoid is, and not as much hired as just made him think he worked for us. In fact, if anything, he volunteered to work for us. Anyway, his description is more, well, hard to put down. The features of his face are missing. It just a, seems like a flat white state of... It seems like a mannequin head, but made of a fleshy substance. This entity speaks English and has longer limbs than most humans would have. The skin is almost marble white and there is no hair on the body. But otherwise, this entity behaves like any of us would. We have roughly determined the behavior to be more what we would call masculine, so we have elected to nickname this entity Stephen. But more specifically, one particular trait has earned him the nickname Stephen King. Stephen is inhumanly good at transcribing information of all kinds. He's able to write down an entire experiment's worth of information. You know, the never-ending reports that span 10 pages on average. He can transcribe these verbatim in minutes, by hand, in pencil, with no smudges or handwriting imperfections. Keep in mind, our fastest processors in our labs take an hour to process and catalog the information properly. This, along with subtle signs, prove that Steven is some sort of anomalous being, probably from another planet or another Earth's dimension, perhaps. We had suspicions that this being would be gathering information for use against us, or at least for themselves, but we've not seen him keep any written data for himself. He seems content to give us anything he writes once done. He almost seems happy to just be with people in general. No signals of any kind seem to be going out of the lab, so he's not transmitting anything. We monitored him for a while and found another interesting trait, one that implies he's been around for a lot longer than we thought. I mentioned that Stephen could write quickly, but he also has a collection of written texts that aren't of lab data or of anything relating to our work. Rather, they are recounts of stories from the perspective of different individuals. Each entry is usually three or four pages long, ranging from fantastical to mundane, all very well written. He has handed these writings to several people on our team, and each is almost impeccably timed to situations they are going through or questions they are thinking deeply about. Finance, marriage, occupation, all questions seem to be answered through the characters and situations in the stories he gives them. A sort of mirror to their life in a different way. These have had a positive impact on our work and morale, so we've allowed them to keep doing so. However, not all stories seem to relate to life events of the team. As some writings were in ancient human languages like Sumerian or hieroglyphs, and the paper used correlated to the paper that would have been present at the time and location that language was written. Translations of these old writings seem to match historical books and various archives of human history. The rise and fall of the Roman Empire, the first Japanese emperor, etc. We couldn't confirm accounts from what seemed like the Aztec era entirely, but what we could find seemed to match carvings and recreations of the landscape. This could be a great boon for humanity, as we could fill in the gaps in our records we could never find before. Perhaps Stephen was immortal, or maybe a time traveler. This has affirmed our hunch that he is possibly from other areas of the universe that humans haven't yet explored. We will try to suggest a physical for Stephen's own health, and see if we can gather biological scans. Of course, there are the future accounts we can't confirm at all. I mentioned Stephen could produce stories from many periods and we can confirm them with peripheral details or books. And since we had no reason to doubt his writings, or at least no logical reason, we were concerned when writings of events that have yet to happen started popping up. A powerful figures in the government branches, collapses of various forms of currency, future wars between nations. Naturally, these can't be immediately confirmed, but even if these were remotely true and we would report them to the president or the UN, we would be seen as even stranger than we already are. Some writings aren't even recognizable in any human language whatsoever. Glyphs that seem like old line script pre-Sumerian. We asked Stephen if these symbols were from a child's diary or something, to which Stephen shook his head and paused, and then shrugged. I suppose, in a sense, they would be considered young in some eyes. We have since updated our notes to include possibilities of Stephen being omniscient or perhaps a multidimensional being. We have a few entities under heavy surveillance here that would qualify for such things, but none have freely given out information on human events. Stephen has not shown signs of an agenda, although a spy wouldn't say that, now would they? One day, Dr. asked Stephen if he could tell him about his future and how he could get the best life he could. Stephen gave Dr. a story on lab paper, which we never gave him at all, neatly folded in half, about four pages long. After reading it, Dr. acted on edge. His attention was on his work for a while, but he seemed to drift off slowly. 
Other staff members tried talking to him, but it was no use. After a few days, Dr. was absent from his station. We had no footage of Dr. coming into work, and no station had proof of his card scan. Security asked Stephen if he knew anything, being the last person in contact. He just said that the story he gave the doctor ended decently happily, and didn't know why the doctor didn't like it. Our team concluded the doctor tried to change events related to the story, and somehow he ceased to exist in our timeline. Our higher-ups proposed a test for volunteers, only to prove that what happened was true. A few members of our staff asked Stephen for their stories about certain events in the future, which he was happy to provide. Even seemed to smile despite having no features. Each volunteer was instructed to change an event that would relate to their story or life in the writing. Each was never seen again. Steven said something about volunteers straying from their ending, and that he didn't know what happened to them because of this. Since these disappearances, nobody was allowed to ask Steven for any writings whatsoever, and if writings were produced, they were to be collected and analyzed. We let Steven wander the lab as he has continued to be useful to our work, but we will continue to monitor his actions. Personally, I would wonder how far the stories go, or rather the scope of what they can cover. Are they limited to just individuals, or can they see events of whole cities, even whole worlds? The doctor stared into the distance. He waved a hand dismissively and shook his head slowly. That's just extreme speculation on my part. We will monitor an update. The doctor leaned back as the cameras were turned off. The doctor and crew left in an orderly manner. The doors closed and the lights turned off. The office returned to its quiet, empty state. Slender white hands folded the corner of the paper and set the sheets in a neat pile before standing up. The figure sighed and stretched. I'll have to finish your story later, the figure said. It's getting late. The tall person put down his pen and moved through the void, around the large desk and up to a box of stapled paper packets. The figure placed a long, slender, pale finger on the stack and caressed it lightly. So many characters I'd never used. Maybe one day I'll finish your journeys. The tall figure glided into the darkness further out, fading into the void. And once more, the writer put his pen down.